So a few weeks ago, I found a dead rat in my waste bin down by the side of my house. Now bear with me because it got me thinking a lot about task avoidance in ADHD, our experience of it, and what to do about it. And that is what I'm gonna talk about in this video today. I know that the image and the thought of a dead rat feels a bit disgusting, and I did think that maybe I would like mention it once and then just talk kind of implied about it, but I'm gonna mention it a few times because that's kind of the point of this. The point is, it feels gross, it's disgusting, and that's how we feel a lot of the time when we've got loads of stuff that we don't wanna do, but we're aware that it is building up. So. Let me tell you a story about it. Hi, hello, I'm back. It's been a while, like it feels like ages. It's been such a long time um, since I have been doing this kind of style of video. So welcome back to me and me to you. And also if you're a new subscriber, hi, thanks for joining. Today I'm here to talk about task avoidance in ADHD. So let me start with a little tale that will put it all into perspective and hopefully make it all make sense. A few weeks ago, if you were my neighbor, you would have heard me tootling down by the side of my house um, and then suddenly exclaim, and this was completely like reflexively, this was a total reflex. I didn't know I could get so many words out of my mouth at once. I should know that, but <laughs> as a reflex, you would have just heard me go, oh my fucking God. Because I glanced in a food waste bin that we don't use, that we have down by the side of the house. And inside was quite literally a drowned rat. But right? Gross. Gross. Not nice. Also, RIP. I hope you're okay, wherever you are. I didn't think that I was a particularly squeamish person, but apparently we found my limit. So I said to Mr. Rachel, oh, the, there's a rat. Can you deal with that? And he was like, don't worry, I'll sort it. But he was out of the house for a while for a few days. And this is what kept happening. I would be walking up to the house after being out and I'd be like, oh, there's a dead rat in there. Or I'd be brushing my teeth and I'd be like, oh, duh, there's a dead rat in there. I'd be going about my day and then Ugh, a full awareness that there is a dead rat that needs to be dealt with just outside of my house. And it got me thinking about the experience that so many of us with ADHD have. The sense that there is these things that we need to do that we have been avoiding and have been avoiding for a while that feels gross and horrible and like, oh no, when we think about it, but they're there and they exist outside the edge of our house or our periphery and there's just growing awareness and lots of you will have many of them that you haven't dealt with yet, right? They're just there. Now, this is where the metaphor gets lost a little bit because I went outside like a week later and the rat had just magically disappeared. I think a fox had carried it away. Unfortunately though, there isn't a magical fox that's just gonna come and take away the things that you have been avoiding. But here's where I think this is important. Most of the people that I talk to or that I work and coach with have been recently diagnosed with ADHD or diagnosed within the last few years, right? And so they're still in the process of unraveling and working out how their brain works and what to do about stuff. And many of you will be in the same position. You will have a backlog of life stuff that has accumulated because you didn't know that you had ADHD and you weren't sure on the strategies and the mindset and the stuff that you needed to deal with all of these essentially dead rats in bins, right? So there will be some of you sitting here right now knowing fully well that there is something that you have been avoiding for a long time. Is it a phone call you had to make? An appointment that you need to book? It could be a project that you started that you haven't finished. It could be something that you said that you would do for someone and you haven't yet and they haven't chased you, but you're aware that you're gonna have to see them at some point and you haven't done it and it's playing in the back of your mind, you know? Is it taxes that you have to file? Is it a wardrobe full of clothes that you wanted to throw away, but it's just been building and building, right? There are these things that feel big, that feel oh, when we think about them, and they've accumulated over time. But what I think is important to for you to know and important to recognize is that like, you can end up feeling like that is just how it is to live with ADHD. Like that is how you will always feel. Now, there are always gonna be parts of that. Task avoidance is various different reasons why we avoid tasks and there's various different, you know, executive function deficits in ADHD that will make it more likely that things will pile up in our lives. But you are potentially at a place right now where you've just got like a whole backlog of stuff. And what happens with that is that that bad feeling infiltrates the rest of your life, right? So if you've got say five things that are feeling like dead rats in bins to you and you don't wanna look in there and you know that it needs to be dealt with and you're feeling bad about it, that hangs over you and it makes everything else feel worse. It's like if I was to go into the, to the alley by the side of my house and decide that I was gonna sweep the leaves or do some weeding or, you know, tidy up the area. 
and I'm doing it, but I know fully well that there is a dead rat in a bin <laughs> right next to me. It doesn't feel good. The tasks that's, that can feel easy don't feel easy or easier when there's this backlog of stuff that we have been avoiding waiting for us. So here's what we're gonna do about it. The first thing to acknowledge is there is gonna be a degree of discomfort as you deal with these things, right? It's probably why you've been avoiding them. Maybe they're things that you found incredibly boring. Maybe it was a person, there was gonna be a conflict or a conversation that was uncomfortable for you. You've been avoiding it, right? The reason we avoid lots of our tasks is because there is a negative feeling associated with them. But what happens is that the longer time goes on, the more and more that feeling grows. So you've got this food waste bin, it's got a dead rat in it. And for all you know, I don't even want to describe it, right? I feel it as I'm talking about it. It's it's like grown beyond belief and it's even grosser than you could possibly imagine. But the thing is, you don't know that. You don't know how big the rat is in your bin, how old the rat is in your bin. You don't even know if there is a rat in your bin. And when you systematically go through and start looking at the things that you have been avoiding, you will most likely find that they are not as bad as you think they are. Because the feeling of the unknown of what is festering inside that thing that you are avoiding and don't want to look at is far worse often than the reality. Now, let's be real, because life is shit sometimes. You might open up one of those bins and discover it is actually worse than you thought it was gonna be. But the point is, that discomfort needs to happen because you can either continue to live in this constant state of not even low level, let's face it, pretty constant uncomfortable discomfort of shame and confusion and oh, there's all of this stuff that I haven't done and oh my God, right? Or you can start slowly and systematically looking at what is it that I need to deal with in this task that, I, that I'm avoiding that is gonna cause a spike of intense discomfort to confront it, but once I've seen it, I know what I'm working with and I can deal with it and then I can relax. It'll be a bit like this for a while, right? Ain't that the ADHD experience? But as I always say, it's better than this constant grade of I am drowning in all of the things. Oh no, I said drowning and I'm thinking of the rat. Oh Lord. My point is, it's gonna feel icky, and that is all part of it. So here's what I recommend that you do. Number one, make a list of all of the things that you have been avoiding that really you just, you're feeling gross about. Make a list of them. And then I want you to metaphorically lift the lid and look inside the box. I'm not saying that you gotta sit down and tackle all of those things in one go, right? Oh, I need to deal with that. That's part of the issue. You don't know what's inside, it feels massive. You don't even wanna open it. So the first thing to do, if you've been avoiding these tasks for a really long time, is to just open the lid and look inside and be like, that's better than I thought it was gonna be. Or, yep, that still feels uncomfortable, but you know what you're working with. And make a list of those things, you know, what is the state of this current thing that I'm avoiding? What is it that needs to happen, right? That's the first step. Maybe you wanna do that just one week or one particular day. We don't have to do all this in one go. It's okay, it's gonna take some time. The second thing then, when you know what you're working with, is to ta 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 is to start tackling the stuff, okay? There's various other tips around task avoidance and getting yourself in a motivational state to do the stuff. But one of the things that I wanna focus on here is this idea of discomfort. It's gonna feel uncomfortable, but if you focus on managing yourself through that discomfort, it makes you less likely to avoid tasks in the future and also just more equipped to deal with the task you need to deal with. So that is acknowledging that it's gonna feel uncomfortable. Doing something like setting a five minute timer to start the task can be helpful because you're minimizing it. You're saying, I only have to be uncomfortable for five minutes and then I can run away again. But quite often, once you've started, you get the momentum going. So acknowledging you're gonna be uncomfortable about it. And then the other aspect of this I wanna talk about is, I'm saying the song in my mind, but I've forgotten the words. Regulation. Regulate is gonna regulate. Nervous system regulation. Opening a load of boxes with a load of dead rats in does not feel good for you. Confronting the task you've been avoiding, potentially opening yourself up to feel shame, to feel failure, it feels like a threat to your body and your nervous system. So, as you are tackling this stuff, think about how you can comfort yourself either before, during or after, or all of the above. That could be drinking a comforting hot beverage. Essentially, what is it that makes you feel comforted? Wearing a warm hoodie, weighted blankets, um, a hug, a lovely, lovely hug from somebody that you care about. What is gonna help your nervous system feel settled and safe and calm again after you've had to deal with the confrontingness of like, <gasps> the rat. Exercise, another great one for that. Really brisk walk, 
Maybe you've got an indoor bike you want to have a little little on. Maybe you want to go for a run. Maybe you just want to put on a really loud, angry music and just like get it out of your system. Stuff that is going to help yourself settle after dealing with the discomfort. And finally, and I'm hoping it's going to come to me, now I've said the word finally. What's actually happening right now is I was imagining how I was going to edit this with like lift music as there's the cogs are turning in my brain, but it means I've completely detra detracted from what I was going to say. Finally. Oh, finally. What have we talked about so far? Let's recap. Who knows? <laughs> this is what happens when I write no notes, but also I'm kind of okay with that. I'm going to recap because you might have got lost too. Avoiding tasks. Bad. <laughs> Feeling bad at ourselves. Bad. Um, opening the lid on the box, just seeing what is involved in the things that you have been avoiding that you want to tackle. Then systematically, I might have even missed this step, oh my goodness, chaos. But then being able to pick up one of those things that you need to work on or need to get done and managing your emotions and the discomfort as you tackle it, yes. Calming the, the nervous system, regulating yourself back to feeling okay again when you have been confronting it, and we got there. The final tip is let go of giving yourself a hard time for the fact that you haven't done it. Because inevitably what is gonna happen is you'll start working through this stuff, you'll realize it's not as bad as you thought it was. You'll realize if only I had done that six months ago when I was supposed to do it, I could have saved myself from six months of feeling constantly like there's a dead rat in the alley, right? All that does is compound the badness, the bitty bitty badness. I know it's hard, but just be okay with the fact that like you're dealing with it now and this is what's important. There are very valid reasons why you haven't dealt with it. It is not your fault. You are taking control. You are doing the thing now. Be kind to yourself. I think that's all I came to say. Questions? Wow, I feel rusty. What happens now? I, to be fair, I say that like I have a system. I've never had a system. I just end the video. Um, <laughs> if you've got any questions in the comments about task avoidance, I am losing my voice. I've uh, This is a whole other side thing, but I feel like I've had either hay fever or a virus for the last two weeks, but only today have I come back to life. So anyway, but now I think I need to stop talking. <laughs> Living my life. You know what to do. Do the subscribing, do the liking, do the commenting. Live your life. Have a nice time.